What's up, YouTube? Mr. Lamacy here, and today we're going to be talking through a Diablo 2 Whirlwind Barbarian. For a uh, starting character, this is a pretty terrible character. I have a guided playthrough of the Whirlwind Barbarian, technically possible, but I also have a guided playthrough of a Punch Barbarian, so, you know. Um, it is not great early, but it ends up being one of the best skills late game once you get some gear going with it. It is very fun. Everybody loves it. It's so iconic. Uh, it definitely is better in classic and used to be better earlier before they kind of nerfed it and made it so you didn't hit as often. That kind of made it not quite as good. But like I say, once you get the gear going, it's a fantastic AoE skill and really is very powerful in the late game. So with that being said, let's jump into the build and I will kind of talk through all the stuff. Starting out, we have the Barbarian himself right here. You have all of his stats, you can see, pretty nice. Great life per, per character level and, and vitality point. Uh, so definitely a tanky boy right there. And in the bottom right, you can see he has decent frames overall and breakpoints. If you don't know what these are, I'll explain them in a link down below in the description. Um, but just know that it's pretty nice and you'll want to use this when you're making certain builds just to help out. For increased attack speed, you'll need a different calculator for that because there's so many variables that it's it's a mess. You need to actually go and use a calculator for it. So I can link a calculator in the description as, below for that as well because it is a lot. Jumping into the final skill build for this character, this is what it looks like. You can see I've even got points left over. This is kind of put them where you want sort of thing. You won't even use all of them. So maxing out Whirlwind is going to be uh, your first piece. Maxing out whatever weapon mastery you're using. Sword mastery or axe mastery is generally going to be the one that's used. Maxing battle orders. Um, and then you can max shout as well. You don't even have to max shout. But it's just kind of like you have so many points that eh, why not? You can boost up your defense as well and maybe be a little bit better right there. But you could also put these points into like find item if you want to become a find item character. I mean, you could put them in other places, whatever. Beyond that, battle cry is super nice. Great one point wonder, increased speed, natural resistance, a great one point wonder. Um, and then I have a single point in berserk here for some magic damage, just in case you run into some physical immunes and you don't feel like you're able to hit them very easily, right? This is just the classic whirlwind build. But, Mr. Llama, how do I get to there? Well, first off, you can't even get to Whirlwind until level 30, so I would definitely recommend using some sort of double swing barb um, to start out. So leveling up like level 2 in Bash, level 3 in whatever mastery you're using, level 4 in the mastery, 5 in the mastery, Den of Evil, then level 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. You can just kind of put points in here, put more points into Mace Mastery, or whichever master you're using, back and forth um, until you get to basically level 24, where you can get into Frenzy, you can get into Increased Speed, and you can get into Battle Orders. So that's going to kind of be the nice pieces there. Um, you can also get a point into Battle Cry, just for lowering defense and such. Uh, and then at that point, you'll just kind of keep going your Frenzy till you get to Whirlwind. At this point... You can make the decision if you would like to jump into Whirlwind or not. Something that you should note when you take a look at this skill is the damage is minus 50%. That's right. When you have one skill point in Whirlwind, it actually loses half your damage. And it's not until you get a bunch of plus skills that you'll get your damage into the positive and you'll start boosting the attack rating. So if you want to do that um, first, you can... Uh, but it's for me, once again, this is why I recommend like waiting a little bit, leveling as another character, and then going to Whirlwind when you're a higher level so that you aren't getting that early um, damage nerf from Whirlwind right there, right? So anyways, eventually you'll get yourself into a lot of Whirlwind. You'll get yourself into, you know, whatever masteries you're using, blah, blah, blah. Um, and then you can, you know, boost up your battle orders, right? So all pretty standard when you do get to that stuff going. But like I say, probably pick a different one. Uh, you can check out my Frenzy build or just the guided playthroughs that I've done for Frenzy or any of those characters to kind of see some of the other playthrough um, leveling ways for this character. Now, for stats, you want to have enough strength 
and enough dexterity for your gear, and not really much beyond that or any beyond that, it's just generally not worth the points to, to put it beyond, especially because you get so many points or points of life for every stat point in vitality. So every point that we add in vitality, we get four to life, which then gets magnified by our battle orders. Um, so it ends up just being super worth it to just try and get as many points into vitality as we possibly can, right? Make him a super buff boy right there. And one more thing to note for the skill build of leveling through. I actually am going to have a written guide for like the fastest way to kind of level a barb up. I'll put that in the description as well. So you have something to look at and go, okay, I can follow this along and do a little bit better right there. Because I know that was like a little bit kind of rushed through that piece. But I just want to say, eh, you know, I mean, you're not even going to be whirlwind till 30. And then if you are whirlwind, you're pretty much just going to be like getting the whirlwind points. And then getting whatever mastery you're going to be using with your 1-1s one and uh, your points right here like this. Maybe a few points there. And then you'll just be putting every point into Whirlwind. And then uh, after that, you'll be putting every single point into whatever mastery you're using and going from there. Right? So just kind of a very simple um, build for the character. Now... Let's get into some of the gear for this character. So this is going to be generally like, uh, I say like best in slot. I'm not counting all the like crazy extreme rares and magic items that only the top 0.001% of players are going to have, if even that. Um, I'm saying this is the stuff that's really achievable by a lot of players. And some of you might be like, grief? That requires a low rune. Yeah, I mean, it might be a little tough, but... These things are going to be nice. And we'll talk about budget things also as well with this character. So starting out, we can do Ariat's Face. Just kind of a very nice best in slot barb helm. Not too hard to find. Really helpful. High Lords is super great. Deadly Strike IS. Um, Breath of the Dying is a nice offhand. Doom is a nice offhand. Death is a nice offhand. Beast is a nice offhand. Uh, really kind of pick whatever you would like for this to be on your offhand. Maybe I wouldn't use Doom on this character as much. I'm looking for a little bit more, like, big old damage from, like, Death or Ebot or something. But, honestly, any of those will be fine. But your main hand should be Grief. Um, and, honestly, even running two Griefs totally works. Grief is just absolutely insane with how strong it is in this game. For your armor, Fortitude, it has massive enhanced damage, 300% enhanced damage. We really want a lot of damage here, so that is super helpful. Also, survivability is nice. Laying of hands are good gloves. Dracules can also be nice if you want to get those procs. Um, or sorry, you don't actually proc with Rowan, so ignore the Dracules. Uh, but Steel Rens could also be nice to get yourself some enhanced damage from that. Um, Raven Frost is solid. The dual leech ring is a nice, like, secondary piece. You're going to need, uh, cannot be frozen somewhere. And so this is a fantastic place that you can get cannot be frozen. This is kind of the, like, best in slot way. If you don't have it on a Raven Frost, you have to have it on somewhere else, okay? Um, and yeah, the IAS isn't the, the thing that you're really looking at. You're looking at the damage to demons and the fire res and all that stuff there. Um, so 350%. I mean, hey, that's really nice, right? But like I was saying, Steel Rens get you some crushing blow chance and then massive enhanced damage as well. So this is a very, like, nice item if you're going to have a little bit more strength for the character. That's going to be one of the big things. Uh, some people like to not run Cannot Be Frozen on Whirlwind, and it actually isn't a terrible thing. This is probably one of the only melee characters that you can consider not having Cannot Be Frozen. And the reason is because if you're frozen, you spent, you go slower through the monsters, and so you actually hit way more because you're like in the middle of them the whole time while you're frozen. But you're still hitting just as often. Uh, so some people actually enjoy that. I know it can be used sometimes in in uh, certain instances. I still prefer having some sort of cannot be frozen because I just like to kind of not get stuck in a death loop of whirlwinding while I'm frozen and just be this really long whirlwind. But some people like it. So that's kind of an optional thing to you. Um, I like to have Verdungos right here just because you get the nice life uh, from all the vitality and the damage reduction. 
Um, and like I said, a dual leech ring is really nice. Uh, it's also good to just get, you know, big stats rings or whatever. You could use another Raven Frost if you wanted for even more dexterity and attack rating. Um, so really there's, there's kind of a few different options there. And then the boots are Gore Riders, which are just the classic boots. Getting the Crushing Blow, getting the IAS, getting the de or the Deadly Strike and the Open Wounds, excuse me. Um, pretty much just going to always be like the best in slot for this setup right here. Now, what are some other possibilities for this character? Uh, well, I'm glad that you asked. One nice possibility is actually just using the Immortal King set. And let me get some strength for it. So this is actually the set that the Immortal King set is pretty much built for. Because you have this big old mall right here. And it's super nice. I mean, look at this. You get big attack rating, big life, big resistances. All sorts of damages right there. The mall is actually decent. It's got good attack speed on it. And you get the nice uh, crushing blow. You get... Um, Big resistances, even more here, hit recovery. You get masteries, damage reduction from it is super good. Uh, you're gonna get some nice life leech and everything and mana leech right there. And then you get even more plus the skills and a little bit of magic find, whatever stuff. It is a very nice um, set overall and not too expensive. The, the armor is gonna generally be like the most expensive piece, but I mean, even then it's usually not crazy expensive. But with this set, you also look really cool. So, I mean, a lot of people just love the look of the set. I think it's one of the coolest looking sets, if not the coolest looking set overall. So, IK is definitely uh, a super fun set to run with and highly recommend it if you're just looking to whirlwind on a budget. But what if you're not even that uh, rich or what if you're just like playing through and you have some questions about some of these things, right? Starting out early when you're doing your frenzy and stuff, just getting things like Malice and Tal 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 can be nice. Um, you're going to want to find some stuff, maybe like an Honor a little bit later, right? Looking for just like higher damage stuff to hit with. Also getting some nice things with some IAS can be good. Nord's Tenderizer is not terrible. Um, you know, Dark Clan Crusher is okay. Redeemer is not bad, right? Things with just some good damage can be nice. People really love the blood letter, and this is actually one of my favorite items to find because it's low requirements. Once you hit level 30, which is when Whirlwind is available, it gets, and this is a bad roll on it, but you get plus to Whirlwind and plus to uh, Sword Mastery, IAS, and Enhanced Damage, and Added Damage, Attack Rating, Lifesteal. Literally every stat on this is going to be fantastic. And so running like two blood letters can carry you all the way through Nightmare and you can actually go even a little bit further with it before you really need to kind of like upgrade out of it to a better weapon. Definitely like the classic whirlwind weapon. Is it going to be the fastest thing in the game? Once again, no, but it is nice. It is solid for kind of going through. Um, other options could definitely be stuff like Oath, Kingslayer, Obedience, um, which I think we've got one over here. Obedience can be really nice. You get yourself the enchant. You get the crushing blow from it. Uh, Bone Hue could be decent for you to use. Nice big IAS. Insight could be a nice weapon. Black could be good to get some damage and crushing blow. Um, so there's really some different options of some big old boys or, or smaller weapons to carry. Plus, you know, whatever you kind of want, right? Grandfather. Sure, if you get a grandfather, why not? Uh, in terms of armor, stealth is kind of your early, early stuff. Um, twitch throw is really nice. So I love twitch throw. Get yourself a little IAS. Duress would be a pretty solid armor to have. You get the cold damage. You get the hit recovery. But you get resistances. And then, of course, crushing blow and open wounds is really helpful. So this is, like, a very nice armor to get. Um, treachery is also fantastic. Uh, actually, I mean, it's still good. It's still good. You're getting the fade and you're getting that venom and that's still going to be really solid for the character. So still recommended overall for that. Um, cannot be frozen once again if you want it. This is These are two great sources to get it. I like Durial Shell a lot. I think that's a pretty solid armor. If you don't, maybe you run like a Smoke or a Lionheart just to get some life and res and all of that. Um, 
Belt wise, once again, cannot be frozen if you want it, is right there. Otherwise, you can use just like big old life belts, or you can use a string of ears, or a tea gods for some sorb. Cannot be frozen can come from a Trang Owl's belt, and it also has really big life, so this is like a great source of it, honestly. One of my favorites. Um, rings and Ammies, you can use, you're gonna definitely want attack rating, so getting just like big attack rating rings is helpful. Getting a Seraph's Hem could be really nice. Getting an Atmas, getting a Mahim Oak, getting Nagel rings for the attack rating, and hey, a little MF isn't bad. Um, just dual Ravens, whatever you can get to really boost your attack rating. And one of the best sets, of course, is the Angelics because it has nice attack rating boost. You're going to get hundreds and hundreds of attack rating for wearing this on top of 10 dexterity, on top of 75 life. Love getting all of uh, the angelic set right there. You won't be using a shield generally. You technically can. Um, most people don't use a shield on this. If you want one, you can have Cannot Be Frozen from Rhyme, and then you can have uh, Ancient's Pledge. So that's technically something that you could use. Uh, but... I mean, I guess, like, you know, you wanted to go around and spin around with just that. But, I mean, a lot of people, um, you know, you could also put a storm shield on. That's very true. Uh, that would that would also be fine. So, you know, there's some survivability potential uh, for it if you want to have some of that. So, Ancient's Pledge is great early on. Rhyme is nice for the canopy frozen. Moser's can be nice. Storm shield can be a nice one. Uh, Sanctuary for big resistances. Phoenix Shield can be nice for just a lot of um, survivability because you get the Redemption Aura. So those can be nice if you'd like. For Helms, Rock Stopper is a fantastic alternative. Peasant Crown is nice. Lore Helm is going to be decent. But I would honestly say even just going with like a big Res Helm is super good. Or even just like a Mortal King's Helm is a nice helm. You get two open sockets plus two to War Cries. That's really solid. You can put some runes in there for resistances or whatever you need. It'll help your battle orders. This is one of my favorite just like helms to find along when I'm playing around. It's not super rare at all. Pretty easy to find. Um, gloves wise, uh, you can definitely get some just like big life gloves while you're leveling up. Especially getting the uh, attack speed and stuff will be super helpful. So you can have this for your frenzy and such. Um, chances can be nice, whatever. I'm sure there's some things, Lava Gouts and all of that, right? Get some Enchant proc and all, all of those things that you, can, that you can have for your character. For your boots, Hisaris, Water Walks, Infernos, Natalias, Alders, Random Fast Roanoke Res Boots. These are all great options, assuming you can't get um, Goblin Toes or Gore Riders. Those would be like the two that you really want. And honestly, though, even Immortal King boots are really nice. 44 to life, 40% fast run walk, 110 attack rating. Really solid. And if you pair them up with some, like, IK gloves or a belt or whatever, with the, I mean, you can get some nice, quick, little, easy set bonuses for that stuff. So highly uh, recommended to look around at some of those IK pieces, even in not the entire set completely. And that kind of covers stuff for your character. Um, for the Mercenary, I would definitely say that getting an Act 2 Might or Holy Freeze Mercenary, uh, kind of up to you. I like having Might for the added damage. Holy Freeze if you want to get more of that AoE slow. Um, I love a Reaper's Toll on this character, just because you get that Decrepify, which is going to add even more to your damage, slow the monsters. Uh, Fortitude is really nice for just the big ED. And in Darils, this is just kind of your like best in slot. Um, you know, if these were ethereal, this is like your best in slot stuff there. Uh, insight is also really nice because this character can use a lot of mana. So I think insight is also a decent option for a lot of stuff right there. Um, obedience is used as well as another like cheap option. Honor is another cheap option. Uh, Tomb Reaver and Bone Hue are both great. They're going to be maybe a little bit more expensive, especially like a Tomb Reaver, but Great big old damage weapons right there. Treachery on your mercenary. Get that massive IES. Get the fade and venom. It'll make them so tanky and really be good for, for your mercenary, especially if you have a nice uh, helm for him with some good life leech. Shaft stop. Gladiator's Bane. Stone. Um, 
you know, lots of lots of whatever armors, smoke. You can put a lot of things on your mercenary. You just want to make sure that he is going to be extra tanky. Uh, in terms of helmets, these are once again also decent helmets for your character. Crown of Thieves would be nice. Get the life, the res, the life steal. Um, Tal Rosh's is actually really a nice helmet. I mean, if you look at the stats on it, it's like the easiest item in the game to find, it feels like. I mean, Venom Ward probably actually is. But it's it's like a super easy item to find, and it just gives you a ton of great stuff. Uh, and then Gaze is also super good. So, yeah, I mean, even Prudence, right? There's so many things that you can put on that are just going to be really, really nice for your mercenary. Um, but overall, I mean, it really is a fun character. Uh, once again, this is the classic, classic build, right? Let me shout now. Classic build. Uh, you know, we're just using the IKs here. But you get to spin to win. And I mean, I don't know what more anybody wants than to be able to spin, the win, spin to win. I don't have any charms really or anything right now, so he's not at his maximum capacity. We're also just using the whole IK set, not all of this stuff. Um, but you want charms like max damage, attack rating, all that stuff. Plus to life is really nice. Uh, you're going to have great resistances. And then on my off hands, I have these plus three to war cries. So that I can get even more um, ad addition right there, right? Even more damage uh, or more life and mana and everything. Because my battle orders is going to be even better. So just something to note. So yeah, he, he really is super uh, super tanky, a decently fun character. Um, my attack rating is pretty low right now because I don't have a lot of great charms. This would definitely be one of those situations where you might consider running like Angelics to really boost up the attack rating. Um, and then the, the last thing I really want to talk about with this character is how you Whirlwind. So if you, whenever you Whirlwind, he's going to Whirlwind to the spot that you click or the monster that you click, right? So if I click all the way over here, He's going to whirlwind all the way over there. If I click right here, he's going to whirlwind right there. So a way that you can get uh, a lot of damage in, and there's a whole formula for how the whirlwinds actually hit, but basically you get two quick hits when you do a whirlwind on the fourth and eighth frame. And then it goes, depending on your weapon, um, and if it's one hand, two hand, all that stuff, how many more frames it's going to be between all of the hits. So if you do quick little short hits like this, you're going to hit on those two frames, and it doesn't even matter if you have a, a slow weapon at all. Um, it's just, it, it doesn't even matter, because you're still going to hit the same speed as if you had a really fast weapon. So that's kind of like the triangle of death, I think is what people call it, whatever it is. Um, but basically, you just want to whirlwind in that little triangle. Whenever you have like a boss or something above you, you just try and whirlwind as many times as you can like this onto the boss, and it's going to do a lot of damage. Yeah, little death triangles. So that's kind of a nice way to play the character. Uh, but yeah, this is the Whirlwind Barbarian. I'd love to hear your guys' thoughts down below. I'm sure many of you guys are experts who are sitting there like, oh, but there's a better way to X, Y, Z, and all that stuff. And I'm sure of it. I don't play Whirlwind a ton. I know a decent amount about the character. But, I mean, like I say, there's definitely going to be some things. So I'd love to hear it down in the comments below. Regardless, I hope that this was helpful. I hope that you get to make a fun barbarian. Mwah! Don't forget to like and subscribe. Peace, YouTube.